Uh, this is Ryan with Passport Game Studios at the Gamma Trade Show 2018 in Reno, Nevada. We are uh, showing off some of our latest and greatest from our newest partners, Rule and & Make and Thundergriff Games. It's been a great show. Uh, we're showing off the new 5th anniversary edition of Takedo here. It came out in 2012, and so add 5 to that, and we've come to the 5th anniversary. <laughs> <laughs> And I've been fired. The fifth anniversary edition features a new cleaner board. So it's the same layout, just to, I guess I should preface, it's the same gameplay, uh, same components. Uh, as far as quantities go, you're gonna get all the same thing you got in the original 2012 version of Takedo, but the game board is a little bit cleaner, it's brighter, uh, but the same general layout. All the cards have been refreshed with new art, including the panoramas, all your souvenirs, the, uh, Hot spring cards, everything you get is gonna have uh, familiar but refreshed art. Uh, even the traveler tiles, the traveler cards, are refreshed with their graphic design. The characters themselves are the same, that art hasn't changed, but the design and the layout of the cards is again just a little cleaner, a little more modernized. Um, other changes include the new meeples, or the Kim meeples as they've been called, which are meeples in kimonos. Uh, they're both form and function. They have a nice triangle, uh, triangular base to show the little kimono, and that helps them stand a little better than the original two-legged meeples from the original edition. Um, yeah, and that is, uh, that is kind of what, what's happened. So this is the new standard edition of Takedo that you'll find in your game stores going forward. Still fully compatible with all of your expansions, so Crossroads, Matsuri, all that you can still use. And uh, yeah, go get it. Ryan. What do you want from me? <laughs> <laughs> I, I beg you to tell me about Smiths of Winter Forge. I will. Right. Smiths of Winter Forge is our new worker placement game from Rule & Make, our partners out of Australia. You may know them from Entropy, Worlds Collide, a small card game we released last year, as well as Skyward uh, with the infamous Rocket Cat. Uh, so they've done a wonderful line of games with us, and this is their latest. So this is coming out in May. As I mentioned, it's worker placement, but the worker placement utilizes a point-to-point -point map movement uh, on the board. There's five different action zones that you can move to, uh, and in order to take the action, you have to spend actions to get there first. You can't just pick up your worker and drop them there like uh, Lords of Waterdeep or what have you. Um, the idea here is that each player is playing as a dwarven guild, and that guild is trying to earn the favor of the royal family and basically collect the royal contract to guarantee their work for a hundred years in this uh, kingdom of Winterforge. Each guild starts with a variable bit of uh, capabilities and skills to craft either weapons, armor, or jewelry. Uh, and so you can uh, develop those skills over the course of the game. Everyone starts with a couple recipe cards. They start with their royal contract they're ultimately trying to complete, as well as a standard uh, contract. And these contracts are to make things like axes and shields and armor and, you know, amulets and things like that. All the things that, uh, yeah, those up there uh, that everybody needs. Um, each of the recipes requires some quantity of materials to craft them before you can go to the forge and bang the anvil and you know make them a thing. So on uh, one given recipe, it might need a mundane material, something like a stone or a wood or some twine. It might need a metal material, and so you have to get something like some gold or possibly glass categorizes in that same grouping, actually. Um, maybe some mithril is a really high-end metal. And then you might need some gems of some kind. So you might get some rubies or emerald or the elusive diamonds that are really, really valuable but are really up the value in the, of your production. So if you're making you know, a, uh, a helmet, and you put a nice diamond in the top, it's gonna to be a top-notch item, and you're gonna be able to, uh, to demand top dollar, right? So you're gonna collect these recipes that you're trying to complete, you're gonna to go to the market to buy the different types of goods, and then you're going to uh, hire people from the tavern. You've got crew members that you can hire to give you extra abilities. You can go to the bank to take out loans uh, that you're gonna to have to repay by the end of the game, with a little bit of interest, of course. Uh, and then ultimately you go back to the forge once you've done everything you need to do and get all your materials together and you use uh, dice rolling to attempt to complete your recipe. And the dice you roll is de dependent on how good of a quality the materials are. If I'm using twine, it only is going to grant me a D4, for example. But if I'm using diamond, I'm going to get a D12 and a D4, you know, things like that. And so the quality of the different materials dictates your chance of making a successful item. 
Now, it's not entirely pass or fail. If you roll the dice and you don't hit your target number, then you get to show that you've started work on that item, and you add a token to it, uh, one of these work tokens, and that adds to your subsequent attempts to craft the item. So instead of craft, fail, lose your materials, it's okay, well, I've started work, but the item hasn't been finished yet, and I'm gonna have to spend more time at the anvil. So ideally, you level up your skills before you go to the anvil to maximize your efficiency and your time, and you're not spending too much time at, <coughs> at the anvil, but uh, sometimes that's necessary for some of the tougher contracts anyway. So uh, the game plays until a player has finished their royal contract, or the uh, deck of uh, standard contracts is fully depleted. Either way, then the game will uh, come to a conclusion at that point. So, there you go. Uh, where is it in development? What's going to be the MSRP? It is done. Uh, and as far as development goes, everything that you'll see on the video here is uh, final product. We're going to be releasing it in May into retail stores. And the MSRP is going to be $60. All right. Anything else you want to add? Thanks for watching Chaz's channel. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> hey, can I do the voiceover from behind you going, Welcome to Passport Game Studio. <laughs> oh, well, Ryan has the mic. So you want to just no. go up to Ryan and do it. <laughs> All right. The worst. Uh, Ryan. Yeah.